Here's everything I know about boat fuel hoses and everything you need to know. Let's get into it. All right, so everyone always has problems with the fuel hose on their outboards, you know. They always go bad. They always come apart and degrade over time. They clog up the carbs. You get all kinds of problems. So you want to get the best fuel hose from the start so you don't have any problems. So this is for an outboard, but it works on an outboard, inboard, inboard, outboard, you know, jet ski, whatever uses marine grade fuel hoses, these tips will work. So there's a bunch of different types of fuel hoses here. You can see I got them laid out. U.S. Coast Guard approved is what you're looking for, but this is type A2. This is a filler neck. U.S. Coast Guard approved. This is type A1. This is typically under the engine cowlings. The A is fire resistant. It's a fire rating. This is for the vent tube. This is an A style tube. This is type B1 fuel hose. This is typically outside, you know, from the fuel tank to the outboard. That's why it's always gray. It's different than this stuff. This stuff is more UV resistant than this, and it's not fire rated like the A1. Now what you don't want to do is go down to the automotive store and just get regular fuel hose because this stuff will come apart. What you're looking for on a boat is the low permeability. It's the vapors. As the fuel sits in there over time, it degrades it, but the vapors can leak through the hose over time, and on a boat, that's not good. You can see the outboard fuel hose on the left and the regular automotive fuel hose on the right. You can see the differences. So the outboard fuel hose has a liner in there. I'll get a shot of it here in a second. But it's much thicker than regular fuel hose because of the permeability issue. There's a close-up of that liner right there. I peeled it back a little bit so you can see it. But what's going to happen is the fuel can sit in this A-type fuel hose for a long time and it won't degrade the actual hose. If anything degrades, it's going to be the liner. This liner really helps the hose hold up over time. I'd obviously recommend the highest quality hose possible. So this is Shield Series 368 low permeation fuel hose. This is a 3.8 size hose. You see all the specs on there, made in USA. So I put this stuff all down in here inside the engine cowling. So I typically see A1 fuel hose under the engine cowling and B1 fuel hose outside the engine cowling. You never see this black stuff above the deck. You always see the gray stuff. So the black stuff is always under the engine cowlings, you know, where it's enclosed. And then the gray stuff is always exposed to the sun. At least that's how I always see it. With this thicker style uh, fuel hose, you can see you can really get a good radius on it. It doesn't kink up like automotive fuel hose does. With that regular automotive fuel hose, you can see it just kinks up just like that. Not good. And it doesn't hold up to the heat well. So I got my B1 coming in the outboard. Then it goes to that A1 here, and it goes down, you know, to the carbs everywhere. It's been on here for like five or six years, and I haven't had any problems with it. The liner hasn't degraded at all or anything. Someone told me it's illegal to use anything other than U.S. Coast Guard approved fuel lines on boats. I don't know if there's any truth to that, but it makes sense, you know. Because these outboards always have fuel hose problems with the ethanol gas. You know, if you're not running marina ethanol-free gas, you just get pump gas from the gas station. The gas sits in here over time and it degrades the fuel hose. That's what that liner's for. On, so it really helps. This A1 style fuel hose, the fuel can sit in here for a long time and I hadn't had any problems with it. Then of course there's the vent right here, the vent style hose. This is A1, but I've seen this in B2. This hose works great. You get the right fuel hose the first time, you don't have to worry about it. That way you hopefully don't have any problems and it won't leave you stranded. Another thing to look out for is you always want 100% stainless hose clamps. There's cheaper ones that are just a stainless band and then a galvanized screw, and the galvanized screw will rust out before the band does. On some of these Evinroos, they use these fuel line zip ties. You can see they're special zip ties and they have that little radius edge there to seal. You know, they seem like they'd go bad and they wouldn't work, but they work great and they don't really leak at all. They're on this hose rail right here, fuel rail. There's one there, there, all down in there. They're kind of a pain to work with, but once you get them tight, I haven't seen them leak really. You know, as long as they're good and they're fresh and they're new, they don't leak. But, you know, if they're old, you can replace them. The thing with these clamps, though, is on boats, you see it cuts into the liner, and that's a problem. But these plastic ones don't. They don't cut into the liner at all. So, you know, it just snugs up on the hose, and it doesn't cut into the liner and cause the fuel to leak over time or degrade the fuel hose. So I got a bunch of different types of hoses here. Here's some of that B1 style hose. You can see this one's pretty old. It's all cracked up and stuff. The sun got to it. The gray stuff seems to be more weather resistant and UV resistant than the black stuff. That's why you never see black fuel hose above deck. You always see it under the engine cowling. You don't want to just go to the automotive store and get the cheap hose. You know, you want to do it right the first time. You don't want any problems. You don't want that stuff coming apart and clogging up your carbs and causing you all kinds of running issues. Just get the right stuff the first time and it'll work great, I promise. Here's some type B2 fuel hose. This stuff is old. It's rock hard. It's split, you can see there's a liner in there, but this stuff is like plastic now, you know. 
it goes bad over time. It doesn't last that long, you know, a couple of years, but sitting in the sun, it gets brittle, you know, and hard fast, dries it out. So on these carbureted outboards, you know, it's low pressure. It doesn't have a fuel pump like a traditional fuel pump. So, you know, they hold up to less PSI, I guess, but it doesn't matter on a boat because it's just going from the tank to the outboard or the inboard, but it is pretty stout stuff. Then here's a filler neck right here, and I've dissected it, you know, I had to cut it up to get it off, but you can see the inside of there, see what it looks like. It doesn't have a liner, it's more like a radiator hose type. You know, the fuel doesn't sit in there for long, so the permeation really isn't that big a deal. It's mainly just vapors, not actual liquid sitting in there. You know, this is A-style. I've heard that A-style works better if the fuel sits in there, but it doesn't matter on this because it's just a filler neck. You can see it's got that piece of wire in there to keep it really stout. Now this stuff is expensive. This stuff's like $3 a foot. So, you know, you want to get the right stuff the first time. You know, that hose is for this filler neck like this. It's what connects up down in there. So you can dump the gas in there and it goes down to the gas tank. So this filler neck hose is in need of replacement. It's cracked up, but it's still good on the inside. It hasn't leaked at all. You know, guys don't like replacing this stuff unless you have to because it's expensive and it's a pain to work with. So that's the filler neck where it goes into the tank. That's the vent hose right there. And then this is the B1 hose right here that goes up to the outboard. So it goes in the tank here, the vent right here for the vapors, then out to the outboard. Then I got the B1. It comes into the outboard, goes in over there and then goes up right here. Then I got that A1 hose all plumbed up in here because of the permeability and the fire resistance under the cowling. You know, it's a little different on an inboard outboard or just a straight inboard, but on outboards, this is how I like to set them up. Seems to work well. Then of course, these primer bulbs, everybody loves these things. These things go hard over time. You know, the sun just eats them up, makes them rock hard hard as plastic and then you can't pump gas at all so you always want to check those too and the fuel hose clamps on these you want to make sure they're all stainless too because like I said that little screw right there will rust out I'll show you one of those here in a second here's a non-stainless fuel hose clamp you can see it's all corroded and rusted up and that's not going to work well at all especially if you're in salt this thing's just going to rust into a million pieces if you got super rusted fuel hose clamps it's going to leak like a sieve and it's not going to hold up over the years especially if you're in salt water so I found these style hose clamps on Amazon. They are 100% stainless, and you can see they won't damage the hose because they're smooth all the way around. They use them in fuel injection on uh, vehicles because they can hold up to the pressure better and they don't damage the hose. I want to try these. I'm probably going to try these on the next outboard build I do because uh, these look like they're going to hold up way better. You know, they're not going to damage the hose because replacing that hose is not fun and it's not cheap. But this is just what I figured out, and it's worked well for me for years. Get it right the first time and you won't have to worry about it for years. I'll put links in the description where you can get this fuel hose on Amazon. Check it on the next one. Later.